on the Zoom is, oh, it has finished its little warm-up already. So let's get started from the current slide. And before we go any further, um, any questions from anything we've covered so far? Yes. Okay. run into that problem okay thank you for doing that uh, they aggravate me that they're so resistant on things like this but I'm glad they they uh, they decided to do it quite often they'll require an instructor or somebody else to do it so I'm glad you were able to talk them into it self you must be quite a persuader okay <laughs> all right uh, all right any other questions comments statements okay and again, if any of you are interested in participating in the math team, I think it would be a great learning experience and a lot of fun as well. Uh, there, I think they may have changed the meeting times, but if you are interested, let me know. And if you want to just practice here on this campus during my office hours, I'll be glad to uh, meet with you there. Mr. Jarasi on the Birmingham campus was meeting five, uh, Fridays at 12, but I think one of the other students uh, said that uh, Monday, Wednesday afternoon at 3 would be better. So I think they may be going to change that. I haven't seen an announcement about it yet, but I believe they're going to. All right. Any other questions? Okay. We finished 10.1. Sorry it took so long to get through that one. Let's move on to 10.2. Chapter 10, of course, is real numbers equations and inequalities. I think we pretty much beat real numbers to death. We're going to use them from now on, and we're definitely into equations now. So 10.2 is more on solving linear equations. Now, what does it mean to be a linear equation? Well, first, it's the first four letters of linear. Line. That means when you graph it, it's going to be a straight line. <coughs> Now, how can you tell a linear equation just by looking at the equation without graphing it? Anyone got a hint or clue? Okay. Generally, for a linear equation, you have two variables, sometimes x and y, sometimes something else. But those variables will only show up with exponents of 1. y is equal to 3x plus 7. Both x's and y's have exponents of one only. And get your name, please. Kiana. Okay, anyone else come in says the call draw? Okay, so that's how we're going to recognize them if they are linear equations. So, we're going to solve some more difficult linear equations. Oh, yes, we were tired of those easy ones, weren't we? Okay, we'll solve equations that have no solution. Now, how are we going to do that? Solve an equation with no solution and infinitely many solutions. Well, how we're going to do that is show that probably graphically, but you'll show, see how to see it algebraically as well. So we won't be solving them, we'll just show that they can't be solved. And we'll solve equations by first clearing fractions and decimals. Usually something I like to do, keep it simple. Okay? So, if you look at page 689, uh, before they quite get to this thing, the slide set and the book, don't, they, they go together well, but there's a few things. Let me go back here. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, here are some examples of linear equations. Or you tell me whether you think they are or not. Okay. How about this one? 5m plus 1 equals 16. Is that a linear equation? Well, 
What you think? Yes. Why? Okay. There's your variable, right? What's the sex one? One. If you don't see a number, you understand it to be one. That's good for exponents. It's good for coefficients. If that didn't have a, co a five there, you understand the coefficient to be one. Now, if that was a square root, if you don't see a index inside the, the uh, radical symbol, well, we aren't going there. That's not in the course. But then you understand that to be a two. But most other places, if you don't see a number, you understand it to be one. Sure enough, that's a linear equation. Okay, how about this one? Uh, 2k minus 2 equal 5k minus 11. Is that a linear equation? Yes, again, your variables are k here. Exponent 1, exponent 1. If you move those either way, like subtracting 2k from both sides, you still get an exponent of 1. Okay? So sure enough, that's a linear equation as well. How about this one? 100 plus a over 2 is equal to 116. Is that a linear equation? Yes. Now this time, even though the a is a numerator, still its exponent is 1. Its coefficient is 1 half, but the exponent is 1. And these are just the force numbers. Okay, so all three of those are linear equations. Can I get your name, please? Maya. Maya. Okay. Okay, I'm not finding you. Amaya. Amaya. Okay. Well, then I misunderstood earlier. What was your name? Amaya. So, uh, okay. Somalia. Okay. Sorry about that. I misunderstood. Well, I already marked you here. I was psychotic. I mean, psychic or something. Okay. All right. Anyone else come in since I called roll? Okay. So those are all samples of linear equations. Now, here are some steps. And generally, these are pretty good. And I would say probably they're, they're right on the money. But sometimes you can fudge a little bit. But these are, are good to go. Step one, if possible, use the distributive property to remove parentheses. So if you have an equation there, and you've got a parentheses anywhere in the equation, clear the parentheses, okay? And generally, it'll be done with the distributive property. Remember that? Okay, then combine any like terms on the left side of the equation, combine any like terms on the right side of the equation. So combine like terms on either side. Now, those can be constants, or they can be terms with variables in them. But combine like terms. Now, add or subtract the same amount from both sides of the equation. Remember your seesaw? If it's an equation, it's equal. If you add something on one side, you better add the same amount to the other side to keep it equal. I've done that before, and I had a student call me Big Bird. But don't, don't call me that. Okay. Now, so that the variable term ends up by itself on one side or the other, and it doesn't matter which side, we usually like it on the left, but it doesn't matter, and a number is by itself on the other side. Now this is true if these are linear equations. Later we may get into doing higher order equations, and if you do go there, you won't follow the quite the same rules. So a linear equation, that's it. You want the variables all on one side, the numbers on the other. Variables on this side, numbers on this one. Okay. Now, there can be numbers multiplied by a variable, but not added or subtracted. So, um, and it says here you may have to do this step more than once. If you can move them all at once, you can. Or if you prefer, take your time, move the variable equation uh, terms first, then move the constant terms later. Okay? Now, multiply and divide both sides of this uh, by the same number to find the solution. That's usually identified with the coefficient of the variable. That's what you're, you're usually multiplying or dividing to clear those out of the way. And then you check your solution by going back to the original equation, plugging in what you found the solution, see if it made the problem correct. OK? 
Okay? Follow the order of operations to complete your calculations. If the two sides equal, if they balance, your solution is correct. Always a good idea to test, to, to check your answers. Don't leave it to chance. Oh, that seems right. Let's go on. Because, uh, frankly, I like not to make mistakes. I make plenty, but you know, if I check my answers, I can usually find them out ahead of time. Oh, boy, here's the first equation. Solve this equation. Check the solution. What would you do first? Okay, clear those parentheses. So for right now, let's leave that minus 2 alone. Don't mess with it. Get to that parenthetical phrase, and what are you going to do to clear those parentheses? Plus 6x. Plus 6x. Does everybody see that? What you're doing is multiplying the 3. We're going to do it by each term in there. The first term gives you plus 6x. Okay, next. Plus 21. Again, that 3 on the outside gets multiplied by what's on the inside. Both of them are plus, so it becomes plus. Equals. 7 plus 3x. Leave those alone for now. Now what? Combine like terms. What like terms do you see that we can combine? Yes, the constants here are like terms, so combine those. Like terms doesn't mean they have the same signs. These don't. It doesn't mean they're the same numbers. These aren't. Okay? What it means is they have the same variable at exactly the same power. This has no variable, so those are like terms. So what do you get when you combine negative 2 and 21? 19 plus 6x is equal to 7 plus 3x. Now what? Okay, he wants to move 3x to the other side. How do you do that? Second? Okay, yeah, subtract 3x from both sides. Now, I like doing it the 3x rather than moving the 6x. And I think I've told you this before. I like to start with the variable terms. And I pick the variable term with the largest coefficient. Now that would include sine. If this was a minus 6x and a plus 3x, that's the larger coefficient. Okay? These are both pluses, so there's the larger coefficient. Move the smaller one toward the larger one. And you do that by adding or subtracting, in this case, subtracting. So that would be minus 3x here and minus 3x here. What does that give you? Yeah, don't forget your 19. 19 plus 3x is equal to 7 because 3x minus 3x is a big fat 0. Okay, now what? Okay, subtract so the 19 from both sides. Why? You want the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. Once you got the variables on either side, get the numbers on the other side. So we're going to get the um, nine, subtract 19 from both sides. And by the way, here's how I look at this. What is the goal of all this? Yeah, to isolate the variable. Here's a variable, there's a variable. Do whatever it takes to isolate those. Moving them this way gets them together. Moving everything else the other way begins to isolate it. You're not quite there, but you're getting there. What do you have on the left-hand side now? Because those add to 0, so 3x is equal to negative 12. And now what? Okay, again, you're trying to isolate the variable. All you want is a naked x there, okay? Nothing with it. No other terms, no other coefficients. So subtract, I mean, divide both sides by 3. And what does that give you on the left? x equal negative 4. And now what do we do? Check it, okay? So let's go back to the original equation, minus 2 plus 3. Don't change a thing to it except where you see an x, plug in a negative 4. Plus 7 is equal to, now this is a question mark, okay? We don't know if this is true. We hope it is. 7 plus 3 times a negative 4, okay? So let's start working on that. Again, use the rule of order of operations. Uh, start with the parentheses, so this will just be a minus 2. Don't mess with that yet. And let's do what's in the parentheses first. So we're not even going to mess with the plus 3 yet. 
So, what does that next term tell you to do? Negative 8 plus 7 is equal to, or question mark, we don't know, this will be 7 minus 12. Okay, very good. Now what do you do next? What's in parentheses? So again, you leave the negative 2 alone and the plus 3 alone. What does that give you? Negative 1. Perfect. And we still don't know if that's true or not. What's uh, 7 minus 12? Negative 5. Okay, how about on the left-hand side? This is a negative 2. What? Minus 3, sure enough. Negative 5. Ding, 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 ding. That is correct. Does everybody see that? Any questions on that? I know it takes a little more time to check your answer, but guess what? What's the rush? You want to get them right. So take your time, check your answers. Okay? Good deal. Let's clear this out of the way. So any questions before I wipe it out? Any step in there is confusing to you. Okay? Then let's see how they do it. Step one. Write it down again, huh? Okay, they haven't done anything. But the FLS uses the derivative property on that. Oh, they bolted the three. That's what they did. Okay, so they are going to take the three and distribute it across the parentheses. So it'll be a negative two that you leave alone, plus 6x plus 21 equals 7x plus 3x. 7 plus 3x. Very good. Then the like terms they bolded, negative 2 plus 21. That will give us 6x plus 19. Whoops, we didn't do it that way, did we? We did 19 plus 2, 6x. Wrong? It doesn't matter. Addition is commutative. It doesn't matter what order you do it. Perfectly fine. Next. Remind me. A little louder. Okay, you could do that. I like to move the variable term first, but let's see what they do. Look at them. They did the 19. Shape. Well, that's perfectly fine. Subtract 19 from both sides. That gives us 6x. Does it make a difference? No. Nah. As long as you do the right steps, it doesn't matter what order you do them. Okay? Just don't do anything wrong. Minus 19 plus 19 is 0. You don't have to write it down. 6x is equal to negative 12x plus 3, that's negative 12 plus 3x. So what would you need next? Say again. Subtract 3x from both sides. Oh, they added 6x and 0. Good for them. Okay, that's just 6x. You don't add anything to it. Okay, then you subtract 3x from both sides, and that gives you 3x is equal to negative 12 plus 0. That's worth it to put that 0 in there, isn't it? Wasted time. Okay, and then... That gives us divide both sides by 3, and you get 3x equal negative 12. Divide both sides by 3, x equal negative 4. Ding, ding, we got it. Any questions on that? Okay, solution is negative 4, x equal negative 4. That's what that said, okay? Now the next they say check your answers, uh, replacing negative 4, uh, x with negative 4 in the original equation at the very beginning. So they wrote it down again. Only this time, I think they bolded the x, maybe. And here we did negative 2 plus 3 times 2 times negative 4 plus 7. Now, notice here, I put parentheses. They like to do brackets. That, to me, helps you see it better. The innermost being parentheses, the next outer would be brackets. If you had any other terms, you put braces. After that, you run out of grouping symbols. Maybe start over. I don't know what you do there, okay? Uh, you don't have to change the symbols, but that's not a bad idea, so you can keep in mind which ones are paired together. Uh, plus, it equals 7 times 3 times a negative 4, plus 7, 3 times a negative 4. Okay, again, do, here we, within the parentheses, multiplication before addition subtraction. So that's why you do that next. Minus 2 plus 3 times negative 8. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 7. 
uh, is equal to 7 plus a negative 12. Now, I usually don't like to write a plus and a minus next to each other. If I were doing this, I would put those at negative 12 in parentheses, just because that's confusing to have the two symbols there next to each other without anything in between. I like having the parentheses there. It's not wrong, but to me it makes it's clearer to do it with the parentheses. Okay, next we do within the bracket. Okay, so negative 2 plus 3 stays the same. Inside the bracket, negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. Now you can change because you got rid of that parentheses in there. Now you can make the bracket in, back into a parentheses. They're just grouping symbols. Okay, you can leave it bracket, you can change it parentheses, doesn't matter. On the right hand side, you got a negative 5. 12, uh, 7 plus a negative 12 is negative 5. Okay, so that gives you negative uh, 2 plus a negative 3. And again, I don't like that the way it looks. I would have put this in parentheses, but 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. And adding those two together gets you negative 5. And they may take an extra, ah, they take an extra step to show, and that does balance, meaning you got your answer right. X equal negative 4. This isn't your answer. This is checking your answer. Your answer is X equal negative 4. Make sense? All right, pretty straightforward. When X is replaced with negative 4, the equation balances. So 4 is the correct solution, not negative 5. That's just your check. X equal negative 4 is your solution. All right, let's do this one. You tell me how to start. Say again? Clear the parentheses. So leave that 8a alone. Just write it down. And what do you have next? Negative 3, because negative times of 3 is negative 3. And then minus 2a. You multiply the negative. And again, if you don't see a number, you understand it to be a 1. Okay, so it's like negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 times a positive 2a is negative 2a. I stopped before I wrote my a, so let's write that down. Is equal to 3a plus 1. Next, combine like terms. What like terms do you see? The ones with a's in them. So these two, what do those combine to? 6a minus 3 is equal to? 3a plus 1. Now what? Say again? Plus 3. Okay, you could do that. Perfectly fine. Plus 3 to both sides. And that gives you? 6a. If you want to write a plus 0, you can. I don't really want to waste my time doing that. What do you have next? These add to 0. 3a plus 4. Now what? Say again? Subtract 3a from both sides, and what does that give you? 3a is equal to, that adds to 0, 4, divide by 3, both sides, and what does that give you? a is equal to 4 thirds. Wait, can you have fractions and answers? Of course you can. Any real number will work. Just as good a number as negative 4, okay? You could if you wanted to. Most of the time, four-thirds is just about as easy to, to, to deal with, especially now when we're going to go back and check it. I would leave it for sure as an improper fraction rather than make it one and, and a third because to go back and check it, ooh, those mixed numbers are much harder than fractions. So let's do it. What would the check be? Eight times four-thirds minus parentheses three plus two times four-thirds close parentheses so you got double parentheses there okay is equal to three times A is four-thirds plus one. Helps to plan ahead, doesn't it? Oh, never mind. Okay, we won't get that. Okay. So let's start with that first term. Now, I'm 
a little bit going to cheat here. doesn't hurt to go on and deal with it. What is 8 times 4 thirds? Second? Okay. Um, all right. When you're multiplying fractional forms, that's a fractional form. Is 8 a fractional form? That's 8 over 1, right? Okay, so this will be 8 over 1. Let's go and write it that way. If that's helpful for you to see, that's the same as 8 over 1. Let's go on and write this as a 2 over 1, not, okay, and a 3 over 1. Doesn't hurt a thing to put them over 1, okay? Now, how do you multiply 8 once times 4 thirds? How do you multiply fractions? Second? I can't hear you. Okay, if there was anything you could divide out, you would, but there's not. Now, you're not going to cross multiply, don't think that, if that's what you were meaning. You multiply numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. Okay? That's how you multiply fractional forms. So, what would that give you? A little louder? 32 thirds. Great. Okay? Minus, now we got a little more work to do. Open that parentheses, write down the 3. Now do that multiplication. Say again. A little louder. 8 thirds. Excellent. Okay. Is equal to, do that multiplication. Okay, this one now, I'm not saying it's a great idea. To, I think it is. Okay. What do you notice on this one? This one, the threes can divide away because we've got three over three. They're all multiplied together. So here you could, now some play, people like to say cancel them out. I like to say divide them out. Three over three is one, okay? Makes it simple. And that just leaves you a four plus one. I kind of like that, okay? So let's go back to the left-hand side. The 32 thirds doesn't change any. Minus, oh my goodness, we got 3 plus 8 thirds. Now, if I'm doing something like that, when you're adding or subtracting fractional forms, what do you need? Say again. Okay, you could put it on one over one, but it's not going to do you a lot of good. You need a common denominator. Now, what would be the common denominator between that one and the three? Three, exactly. Now the question, and you can do this several ways, I'll do it the way I like to think of it. If you have three, how many thirds is that? If you had three objects, I think in terms of food, so three pies up here, and each pie you split into thirds, how many thirds of a pie do you have? Say again? No, three thirds of a pie would be one pie. I don't want to lose two pies. I had three pies to begin with. I don't like the idea of losing two pies, okay? Nine. nine! You have nine thirds. Does everybody see that? Because nine divided by three is three. So yeah, this is the same as nine thirds plus eight thirds is equal to what's four plus one? Five. Okay, I like getting that out of the way. Now here's the other way to do it if you don't like the way I just did. Since you know the least common denominator has got to be a 3, go and write the 3 down there. You do 1 and the 3, 3 times 3 is 9. That's the other way to do it. That's how I learned it way back in grammar school. But uh, it was just a rule that I did. Now I like to think more in terms of, well, how many thirds is that? Well, it's 9 thirds. But however you like to do it. All right. So this is 32 thirds. Minus, what's 8 plus 9? 17. 17 thirds. See, once you have the least common denominator, just add your numerators, keep the denominator. That would be thirds, right? And that, oh, the, these are question marks here. We don't know those are equal, do we? We hope they are. Oh, let's not do that either. Okay? Now, is that equal to 5? What's 32? And again, you have same denominators. 
So just subtract your numerators. What does that give you? 15 thirds. Is that indeed 5? Ding, ding, ding. Yes, it is. Because 3 in the 15 is 5. So your answer check. Well, sometimes checking those fractional forms, <laughs> sometimes harder than doing the problem to begin with. But, you know, it's still not a bad idea to do. Okay? Any questions on that? Do you see how we did it and why we did it? Okay? Let's clear that out. If you have questions, please ask. Okay? I can't tell if you have them unless you ask them. Okay? So let's see how they do it. I bet you they add a few steps. Start by removing the parentheses on the left-hand side of the equation. In this situation, the negative sign in front of that parentheses acts like a factor, just like we said, of negative 1, changing the sign of every term inside the parentheses. Okay? So that would be 8a. They wrote it again. Good for them. I like they take so much time writing them over and over. Okay. So that right now they just highlight the negative 1. That's good. Let's take more time and space. There we go. 8a minus 3 minus 2a is equal to 3a plus 1. Make sense? Okay. Next. Combine like terms. They left them in blue so you could see them better. 8a minus 2a is 6a minus 3 is equal to 3a plus 1. Now what? That's what they uh, did. Now they like to write it horizontally, okay? If you like that better, do it. It's fine. Most things I like to do horizontal better than vertical, but when I'm adding or subtracting, I like to do it vertically, okay? It's up to you, whatever you see best, okay? But that would then be 6a plus 0. They didn't put the plus zeros. I'm so proud of them. Okay, it's equal to 3a plus 4, right? Next, subtract 3a from both sides. They showed you doing it. If I was going to do it there, I would have done it here. Put the plus 4 out there. Ah, whatever floats your boat is perfectly fine to do. 3a, 6a minus 3a is indeed 3a is equal to 4. And that's exactly what they got over there. And then the last step. Divide by 3. Both sides of the equation by 3, and that gives you A is equal to 4 thirds. Then you check that solution by going back to the original equation, replacing the A with 4 thirds, and they didn't show that. <laughs> they were lazy, huh? All right, any questions on that? I forgot to turn my page. Uh, there was example 2. And by the way, I forget to say it sometime. Every one of the oh maybe yeah every one of these examples has another um, what do they call it well, another example in the margin in the sort of gray margins there every one of them has a, sep a, a second one that you can work on okay now if you're going to keep your book you want to write in the margin that's fine with me if you're going to sell it back I would do it on pencil and paper so you can get better value when you sell your book back. But that's up to you. So let's move on to example three. This is page 691. Now, if any of you want to see something done again, we can certainly do those in the margins. Just let me know. And even if you go home or go to another classroom after this and do the problem and you can't get it right, bring them to class and let me know. We'll be, I'll be glad to do any of those. So here's example three. What would you do first? Clear parentheses, how do you do that? 4 times 8 is 32. Does everybody see that? 4 times minus 3t is minus 12t. Equal to 32. Minus 8t. Say again. Minus 16. Keep up with those signs. Excellent. Now what? Combine like terms. No like terms on the left, so just write them down. 32 minus 12t. What like terms do you see on the right? Say again. And what does that give you? 16. Excellent. Everybody see that? Yeah. 
Okay, well, how you got it or what yes, you do next? How did you get it? How did you get it? Yes. Okay, here you have a 4 outside the parentheses. That means you multiply it, distribute it by everything inside. Yes. So that's going to be 4 times 8. Oh, okay. 32. 4 yes, times negative 3t, negative 12t. So all we did was bring that down. That's what we did. The next. I mean, you got oh, oh, yeah, from this step to that, yes, there are no I mean. like terms on this side because that hasn't got a T, that one has a T. They're not alike. Okay. Over here, this has a T, these two don't. Since these don't, combine those. Yeah, so you just left that one alone. Don't get in a rush, you know. You can take your time and do it. Yeah, okay. What next? Minus 8T. Minus 8T. All right. Now what? Add 8t to both sides. That's certainly a legal move, okay? And I'll do it because he said so, okay? But then I'll come back and show you a reason why I do it the other way. But adding 8t is legal in most states, so you can do it. Plus 8t. And what does that give us? Right again? How about this? 32 minus 4t is equal 16. Those add to zero. Next, subtract 32 from both sides. Okay, what does that give you on the left? That gives you a zero, so that's nothing. This is minus 4t is equal to negative what? Negative 16. Okay, and next. Then that divide by negative 4. Okay, and that gives you t is equal to 4. Excellent. Okay, now I can tell he's a very negative person. He likes all these negative signs, right? I know what you're going to do. Yeah, I bet you do. You do Up the, here. You do it the other way. You keep it a positive. Exactly. And I like these positive. No, I'm not just kidding. Okay, I look at the, I always start with the variables, terms. Negative 12t, negative 8t. Which is larger? And I negative 8. Think of the number line. Negative 12 is way over here. Negative 8 is here. You're not at 0 yet. It's to the right, so that one. That's the one I'm going to keep, so I would add 12t to both sides. That keeps this positive. It happens to be that becomes positive, too. And then I have less chance of making an error with my signs. I've just always done Yeah, you can. A lot of people like... They'll go out of the way to get all the variables on the right, left and numbers on the right. Sit down, stand up, fight, fight, fight. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just do it, okay? It came out the right answer, perfectly fine. Or do we know it's the right answer? What might we do? Check it, and how do we do that? Plug it in the very original formula, okay? So that would be what? Ah, don't start that. Plug it in four times. 8 minus 3 times 4, double parentheses there, is equal to 32 minus 8 times 4 plus 2. Now here's why I don't start at the second step. It might look like it's a lot easier to start at. What if I made a mistake going clearing the parentheses? Then down here, it all works fine, but that still may not be the same as what you started with. Start at the beginning. So what do you do first here? And not yet. Do what's in parentheses first. Four times. And there you do your 8 minus 12 is equal to 32 minus 8 times... Six. I like it. Next. Four times negative four is equal to 32 minus 48. Excellent. Next. Negative six. Oh, these are all question marks. You know, you don't know these are equal. Okay, negative 16. Is that equal to? What's that? Negative 16. Ding, ding, ding. It is. It is correct. What's your answer? Negative 16? 
No, that's your check. Your answer is t is equal to 4. Always remember, that's your answer. The rest of it was checking. Okay? Any questions? All right, let's see how they did it. You got it? Okay. Don't let me get going too fast. Or if I'm going too slow, say, hey, come on, move along, guy. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, I bet they're going write down the problem again. Look at them, they did it. Okay. They did highlight what they color in and what they're going to distribute. 4 on the left, negative 8 on the right. So that gives you 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times negative 3t is uh, negative 12t. Equal to, bring down to 32, then distribute the 8, negative 8t, and distribute negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Now, my goodness. Okay, they didn't follow their own rules too well, did they? They didn't combine like terms, which is fine as long as you do correct steps. You know, even if the order is not quite, as long as they're correct. And what they did, they noticed if you strike 32 here, you get rid of this one. You strike 32 here, you get rid of that one. So it is a little shortcut. And it's a legal shortcut. So as long as it's legal, you can do it. Okay? So that leaves us a, are they going to write a zero in? Or? No, just negative 12t is equal to, the 32s went away, and then they reverse the order, I don't know why, negative 16 minus 8t. Perfectly fine. Okay, and then what would you do next? What would you do next? 8t, add 8t to both sides, and that's exactly what they did. That left them, they coming up just like you did. Negative 4t is equal to negative 16. And then, divide by negative 4, and that gives us t is equal to 4. The solution is 4, and guess what? The check is left to you. I wish they'd leave me a check. Never mind, that's not right. No, that's a bill. Never mind. Okay, any questions on that? All right, that was example three. All right, we're moving on to uh, example uh, uh, objective two. And by the way, they did send me a, a new book. I was using another instructor's book, but they sent me your book, okay? Not the instructor edition. I thought before they had answers in the gray margin, that was only in the instructor edition because that's what I was using before. No, they have those marginal ones. Their answers are right there. So do those. You can check your answers. If you can't figure out how they got those answers, that's what you bring and ask me to class. Okay? So let's see what we're going to do next. Okay? Here's an example. 5x minus 15 is equal to 5 times x minus 3. What would you do first? Clear parentheses. So on the left-hand side, just write it down. 5x minus 15. Only it's a 15. Don't write 13, okay? Whatever you do, don't write 13, okay? 15 is equal to 5x minus 15. And you know what it sounds like to me? You're repeating yourself, aren't you? Okay. Guess what? Any x in the world you put in there is going to give you a right answer because they're the same thing on both sides. Okay. Now, if you didn't notice that and you went on to the next step, what would have been your next step? Second. Okay. Subtract so 5x from both sides. What does that give you? Zero. Zero. Negative 15 is equal to zero, negative 15. Guess what? That's true too, isn't it? No matter what x you put in there, negative 15 is equal to negative 15. Okay? What does that mean? There is an infinite number of solutions. So if you ever have an equation, a linear equation, that works out like this, 
that no matter what you put in for X, you're always going to get an answer. That means you have infinitely many solutions. You don't have a single unique solution. That's what we had in those others. You have infinite number of solutions. And that's all you have to put, infinitely many solutions. You can't list them all because of an infinite number. Leave them alone. Just say infinite number of solutions. Okay? So, basically, when you get the same thing on both sides of the equation, you're not checking your answer, that means you have an infinite number of solutions. Whoa, why did it go there? Okay. There we go. Let's erase this. Everybody got it? Okay. Let's see what they do. They wrote down the problem again. Good for them. That's a waste of space. Okay. And then they distribute them to five. Oh, and without even putting changing colors, they did. And frankly, when I see that, I stop right there and say infinite number of solutions. They're going to take it one more step by adding 15 to both sides. Oh, they're doing it differently. That'll be 5x is equal to 5x. And then divide both sides by 5 or subtract 5x. Or else subtract 5x from both sides. And what do you get now? Zero is equal to zero. You didn't know that before you came today, did you? Zero is nothing is nothing, okay? Yeah, when you get something that's always true, no matter what you put in, that's going to be infinite number of solutions, okay? So you could have stopped at any stage. You could have stopped here. You could have done 50, negative 15 is equal to negative 15. 0 is equal to 0. 5x equals 5x. Any point there, you could say stop. Any number will give you. So infinite number of solutions. All right. Any questions on that? When both sides of an equation are exactly the same, up there, there, or there, okay, the equation is called an identity not a conditional equation. An identity is true for all replacements of the variables. While no matter what you put in for x, you're going to get the same thing on both sides. So that solution, uh, the solution set for that is all real numbers. Pick any number, put it in there, you'll get a correct answer. So not a conditional equation. That's a, an identity. Okay? All right. Well, how about this one? What would you do with a problem like that? First step. Help me, help me. Say again? Yeah, do the parentheses. So leave the 2W alone. And what will your parentheses clearing consist of? Negative 7W. Minus 7. Is equal to? Negative 5W. Plus four. Very good. Now what? Combine. Combine like terms. The only like terms I see are those two. What do you get there? Negative five. Negative five W. No, minus, seven. minus seven is equal to negative five, negative five W plus four. plus four. Now what? Uh, plus, uh, w. Second. Plus 5w to both sides. That should work. What does that give you? Negative 7. Negative 7 is equal to? 4. four. And when's that true? Never. Never, ever. If it is, uh, I'll have negative $7 and you have $4. You give them to me and we'll be even. Okay? Yes, I like it. Never mind. Okay, that won't work. Okay? Not true, ever. This is not equal to 4. So guess what? That means there are no solutions. No matter what W you put in there, none of them will ever, ever work because negative 7 is never equal to 4. Okay? In fact, you can see that in the line above, negative 5W minus 7 can't possibly equal to negative 5W plus 4 because negative 7 is equal to that. All right. Any questions on that? So if you get something that never is true, then no solutions. Something that's always true, infinite number of solutions. Something that's true for only one value, like x equal negative 4, that's a conditional equation with a single answer. Yes? Is it 
You mean right up here on this first yes. line? Yeah. Yes, I'm trying to Okay, yeah, you're clearing the parentheses, you're, the parentheses. So you're yes. distributing the negative 7 across the parentheses. Yes. So negative 7 times W is negative 7W. You understand that to be 1W there. Yes, That's sir. what you're asking. Yes, exactly. Negative 7 times 1W would be negative 7W. Negative 7 times plus 1 would be negative 7. Okay, that's it. That's yeah. what I can do. Fantastic. Right. Good you. question. Good question. Okay? All right, all right, to a race now? All right, good deal. If you have questions, please ask. Why is this? All right. So let's see how they do it. They start with multi writing it again, but highlighting that negative 7 in red. So 2w, and we're going to distribute that minus 7 across the parentheses. So it's be 2w minus 7w minus 7 is equal to negative 5w plus 4. Combining like terms on the left, Negative, or 2w minus 7w is negative 5w minus 7 is equal to negative 5w plus 4. Beginning to smell sort of fishy, huh? When you add 5w to both sides like we did, you don't have to do it horizontally. You could do it vertically. I don't care which way you do it as long as you do it correctly. That gives you negative 7 equal negative 4. And what do you notice about that? Not true. As soon as you see something that can't be true, never is true, not possibly true, then you say the uh, you're left with a false statement. Whenever this happens, solving an equation is a signal that the equation has no solution. So you write down no solution. Don't leave it like that, just write no solution. Okay? Uh, if it had been negative 7 equal negative 7, what would you have said? This would have said negative 7 equal negative 7. No, negative 7 equal negative 7. Infinite number of solutions. Perfect. Okay? All right. Good deal. So when you lose your variables, it's either going to be infinite or no solutions. Okay? All right. Now what do we do with one like that? Oh, my goodness. What's that? Okay, now, you're right, that's your first step, find your common denominator between all your denominators on both sides of your equation. Here you have an 8, what do you have here? 1, here, and there. And what's your common denominator of all those? 8. Now, what do you do with the 8? Ah, very good. Now, if this were simplifying something like this, then all you can do is find these kind of nominal atoms and stuff like that. No, this is an equation. So once you find the least common denominator, remember one of the rules you can do with the equation? As long as you multiply the same thing by both sides, you're all right. So you find that least common denominator, 8, and multiply both sides of the equation by 8. Distribute the 8 across. What do you get on the left? 5m, because those 8s go out. Next, minus 80. Very good. Okay, sometimes the numbers get bigger, but guess what you lose? Denominators. And we love our fractions, but you know, I just as soon live with, I mean, not deal without them if possible. What's that? Okay. Okay. Uh, that's an excellent question. Let me finish this step, and I'll go back and answer it, okay? Okay. So let's do that. What happens here to this first one? 8 times 4 thirds, uh, 3 fourths, M. Okay. The 4 will go into 8 how many times? 2. 2 times 3 is 6 M. And 8 times 1 half is plus 4 M. Okay. Now, let's go back to your question here. Why did you multiply by 8? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Now, if you hadn't, okay, let's just imagine that you hadn't. And it's a perfectly fine not to do it. There's no reason to do it if you didn't want to. What you're going to have to do then is... There's nothing you can do here. You can combine like terms here, 
that's going to make this least common denominator here anyway. That would be 3 fourths m plus 4 fourths m, all right? That gives you 7 fourths m. So let's write this down. 5 eighths m minus 10 is equal to, and what we just did was make this 2 fourths, right? 1 half is 2 fourths, right? When you combine those together, that gives you 5 fourths m. Okay, what are you going to have to do next? Say again? Okay, you're still wanting to do common denominators. She doesn't like doing common denominators. Let's not do common denominator. You're going to have to probably subtract 5 eighths m from both sides, right? So subtract 5 eighths m. But you need this to be an 8, so you're going to multiply this by 2 and that by 2. So that's going to give you 10 eighths m minus 5 eighths m will be 5 eighths m and this added to 0 is equal to negative 10 and then what are you going to do? You can multiply both sides by 8 so let's do that. Okay, and what would that be? Negative 80 is equal to the 8's go out, and that gives you 5m, and then you divide by 5, divide by 5, right? And that would give m equal to, it's going to be negative, because negative divided by positive is negative. And 5 will go into 8 one times, with 3 left over, 5 will go into 30 six times, negative 16. Okay? And I sh yeah, I, I think that's the correct answer. Okay, now, huh? Okay, now, here's the deal. You had all those fractions to mess with. You had to do least common denominators here to add these two terms together. You had to do least common denominator here when you subtracted this. So you had to deal with them all, and then you had to, and another way you could do this is multiply by eight fifths. That would have done it in one step, but you had all that to mess with. If you start out clearing all the denominators out of the way, guess what? I can always do these in my head. And I'm lazy, okay? Have I asked you before, I told you what I think a, a good mathematician is? A little, a little bit lazy, okay? So I'm always trying to find the easiest way to do it. Why I multiply by the least common denominator? It's easier to do it that way, okay? And I won't go to the easy route. I'm, the path of least resistance is my favorite path, you know? Uh, you know, if I can avoid going over the hill, I'm going to avoid going over the hill. You know, I'll walk around the hill to keep from going over the hill. Whatever comes up. Let's see if we get the same answer here. What's the next step we would do? Okay. All right. All right. Let's back up. And uh, uh, we'll erase this. And we'll go back to what we did before. We found our least common denominator. Okay, it was 8. We multiply both sides by 8. Okay, again, you're multiplying both sides. When you multiply, multiply 8 times 5 eighths, the 8's cancel out, right? The by the way, leaves you 5m, right? right. Multiply 8 times by times negative 10 is negative 8. Yes, Got it? Okay, then over then here, 8 times 3 fourths. Here, 4 will go into 8. Two times. Twice, 2 times 3 is? 6m. Six six eight times this. Four, two will go into eight. Um, four times. Four times. That's right. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good question. <coughs> yeah, half of eight is four. That's how I think I did it before, but she didn't quite see it then, so I thought let's spell it out. Okay. Next. Combine like terms. There aren't any like terms on the left, so just write that down. 5m minus 80 is equal to what? 10m. 10m. Okay, now what? Subtract 5m from both sides. Don't you like subtracting whole numbers better than fractions? No, she likes fractions. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Subtract 5m from both sides. And what does that give you? 
negative 80 is equal to, say again, 5m. And a, we got the same thing we had right here, if don't we? The rest of it's a piece of cake. Divide both sides by 5. And your m is equal to negative 16. Ding, ding, ding. Okay? So, both ways work. You don't have to multiply by least common denominator if you don't want to. It just makes life easier. Okay? And I'm all for an easy life. That's why I teach, right? No! Whoa, whoa, I didn't say that, did I? Don't tell my boss. Okay. Okay. Now, of course, what are we supposed to do next? Plug it in, plug it in, check it. So, let's do it up here. Now, remember, I'm going to go on and erase these so it won't be in our way. But that was our first step before, but let me get these out of the way. Okay. That's what we're going to plug in. Okay. And that will be... 5 eighths times m is 16. negative 16 minus 10 is that equal to 3 quarter th 3 quarters times negative 16 plus 1 half times negative 16 let's see what we get there here if you put that over 1 of course 8 will go into 16 how many times? 2. two so it will be a negative 2 here. Negative 2 times 5 is? Negative 10 minus 10. Is that equal to? And what's 4 will go into negative 16? Negative 4 times. And four times, 3 times negative 4 is? Negative 12 plus what's 1 half of negative 16? Negative 8. And what's negative 10 minus 10? Negative 20. What's negative 12 minus uh, plus a negative 8? Negative 20. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, that does check. It works. Your answer is negative 16, not what your check was. That's just making sure you got it right. Either way, you got the same answer both ways. Uh, I find it a little easier to clear those denominators first. Since these are equations, once you have that least common denominator, don't go around making them the same denominator. Multiply them by. Get rid of all your denominators. Make life easier. We love our fractions, but not that much. Okay. Any questions for our eraser? Okay. Let's see how they did it. Ah, look at them. They found that least common denominator 8. Multiply both sides by that. Look at them. And they wrote it out this way. If this helps you see it better, 8 times this minus 8 times that equal 8 times this plus 8 times that. Now, you can distribute that way if you want to. And here it's hot, pretty obvious to see the H go out, and that leaves you 5M, and that gives you minus 80. Over here, 4 going to 82, that'll give you 6M, 4 going to 84 plus 4M. Okay? So that'll be 5M minus 80 is equal to 6m plus 4m. Combine like terms. Now use the four steps to solve this equivalent equation. Yeah, I thought we were doing that, okay? Uh, they wrote it down again, how good for them. And then they combine like terms, okay? It gave you 5m minus 80 is equal to 10m. And then they subtract 5m from both sides. That gives you minus 80 is equal to 5m, and then they divide by 5, and you get minus 16. Just what we got. And let's see, I bet they'll say checking is left to the student. No, they don't even say it anymore. Oh, yeah, there it is, checking by substitution. They are going to do it, okay, by putting minus 16 into the original equation. So let's watch them do it. 5h times minus 16 minus 10 is equal to 3 quarters times minus 16 plus 1 half times minus 16. Okay. Again, we're going to do 8 will go to 16, minus 16 minus 2. That will be a minus 10 minus 10. And on the right, it will be minus 12 minus 8. And sure enough, those equal minus 20. So true. Got the answer. Meaning our answer at M equal minus 16 was correct. Any questions on that? And again, there's in the side margins, 
other examples to follow. Okay? Solution to the equation is m is equal to minus 16. I don't like just saying minus 16, m is equal to that. m is your unknown. Now, so what if you have fractions or decimal coefficients? If you have the decimals, not fractions, then I would multiply the decimals. Oh, this is just an example. Multiplying by 10 is the same as moving the decimal one point to the one place to the right. 1.5 times 10, if you do it on your calculator, it'll give you 15. You could do this. Here's how I do it. Move this one one place to the left, that one place to the right, you get 15 times 1 is 15. It makes it pretty clear why you do that. If you have two decimal places here, multiply by 100. Have the same number of zeros in your power of 10 as you do decimal places in the thing you're trying to clear. Again, I think of this moving this decimal two places here, making it 1. Move this one two places to the right, making it 5.4, making it 5.4 times 1. Pretty straightforward. Multiplying by 10,000 is the same as moving the decimal place how many places to the right? Don't forget that. Four, because you got four zeros there. Exactly. Okay. So, what would we do with a problem like this? Okay. The maximum number of decimal places you have, you have one here, two here, none here, two here, none here. So, two is your max. Multiply everything on both sides by 100. A 1 with two zeros after it. So multiply this by 100. Probably should put, oh, not 18. Goodness gracious, where is my brain here? Okay, let's get this right. 1, 0, 0. Multiply this. I'm going to put it on this side, just so it won't be as confusing. Maybe I should have used square brackets. If you prefer those, you can use them, whatever. What's 100 times 0.2? That would be 20. V. Okay? If you don't see that, you know, moving by 100 is moving the decimal two places. Now, V is not a place. That would be 2, 0, V. So that would be 20 V. Is that two places here? No, this decimal two places to the left, that two places to the right. 20 V. Okay? Now, distribute this 100 across here. What does that do to your 0.03? That makes it just a minus 3. So that would be a minus 3 times 11 plus V. Now, notice you only multiply the 100 once times this one and once times this one. You don't multiply this times this, that would be multiplied by 100,000 or 10,000. So you only multiply by once, multiply it by the place it needs it. This doesn't need it. So you multiply it there uh, because that's all one term there. Okay? How about on the right? Negative 6. That's supposed to be a parenthesis times 31. Okay? It's a pretty ugly parenthesis. Let's see if I can clean that up a little bit. Okay. More than I wanted to, but it's okay. Okay. All right. Now, what do you do next? See, what you've done, you've gotten rid of decimals. And you've got all whole numbers again, which most of the time, easier to work with, less likely to make errors. Okay? If you're not likely to make errors, you didn't have to do any of that. You could have just solved the problem the way it was. Okay? But if you're likely to make errors, especially when you're dividing by decimal numbers, remember you have to move decimal places around, this just eliminates most of that. Okay? So what does this give you? 20V, don't mess with that yet. Minus 33, minus 33 distribute the minus 3 across here. Say again? Minus 3V three. Three is equal to negative, negative 186. Because 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18. Perfect. Next. Say again? Combine like terms, what does that give you? 17V minus 33 is equal to negative 186. Next. 
add 33 to both sides. Okay, that gives you 17V. That adds to 0. Now be careful here. Adding sign numbers, what do you do? There's different signs. You take the difference. Okay, if same signs, you take the sum. These are different signs, you take the difference. What's the difference between those two? The total is 153. That's the numerical part. Say again? Negative. Negative, because you go with the sign of the larger absolute value. This one beats that one by a long shot, so it winds up negative. Okay? Now what? Divide by 17. Okay? I'll do this side. That gives me V is equal to? Negative 9. Oh my goodness, is that right? Yeah, 9 times 7 is 63. Carry a 6, 9 times 1 is 9, and 6 is 15. Excellent. And then, of course, what should we do next? Check your answers, and let's uh, erase these so that you don't get them confused. I always, if I've done a step up there, I always, or a lot of times, will mess up and plug it in. So this is 0 0.2 times 9, negative 9 minus 0 0.03 times 11 minus 9, right, is equal to, I'm in a hurry, that's why I'm not letting you do too much talking here. Go on and multiply those out. What does that give you? The sign is negative, and that would be 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18, and you got two decimal places, it's a negative 1.86, right? Okay, 0.2 times negative 9 is negative 1.8 minus 0 0.03 times 2. The question is, these, we don't know about this, is that equal to negative 1.86? Sure doesn't seem likely, but let's see. This is negative 1.8 minus a 0 0.3 times 2 is 0 0.06. And when you add those together, sure enough, you get negative 1.86. Bing, ding, ding. Yes, it works. Okay. All right, I know we're running out of time, but let's, can I erase it? You need it a little longer. Okay, yeah. Okay. Take your time. I'm not in any hurry. I'm not going to get paid overtime. Okay. While y'all are wrapping that up, we will start next time with, that was just example seven. I forgot to even turn the page, didn't I? Hey, we finished the section, didn't we? No, we didn't. Uh... It looks like the book has different examples than what the PowerPoints do, doesn't it? I hadn't even been paying attention. Sorry, folks. Uh, do you think we need to go back and do example six from the book? Because I was doing them on the PowerPoint, and they're different problems. But they're similar. Think we need to do them or not? You tell me. Yay or nay? You do them? Okay. Okay, so we'll start with example six next time from the book. What page number? Please? That's on page 693. And, uh, and example seven was different too, so we'll go back and do that one as well, just to, as a review. Um, so I can't check the answers here, but sure enough, they do check here. Now, homework exercises here. Besides those marginal things, which I think is a great idea to do, um, do... Number one, do any of the odds three through 19, any of those odds? Do any of the odds 21 to 31? Try number 33. 
and do any of the odds 35 to 49. Uh, these start on page 695, and I was just about to give you 698. Do any of the odds 51 through 61? And the last one's on 698. Okay, so it's quite a few to do. We will go back and do the books, example six and seven. Remind me next time, this will be on Wednesday, uh, that these aren't on the PowerPoint slides. I, let me just check and make sure they're not. All right, to go on and advance beyond this, uh, let me just show you. They did the same steps we did. And when they got finally got to an answer, got V is equal to negative 9. Okay? And then they said check it to confirm. That's the end. So we're going to go back and do those. You do the homework exercises. Then we'll start in 10-3 next time. All right. Now, that means once we do 10-3, we're ready for our test. So what we'll do first is a quiz on these, this chapter. And then if everybody feels real good about that, then we'll do a test on it, okay? Good deal. Good class, folks. The only thing I... Yes? Or what? Tutoring? Oh, oh yeah. What did you ask me that before? I meant to say that at the beginning of class. There's two places for tutoring, okay? I'll show you sort of on the map here. What's that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were going to take my tutoring. Okay. All right. You see where we are here? Okay, if you go down this long hallway here, the tutoring lab is right here. It's a two Okay, you can go there. Now down the first floor, you go down the second stairwell here, and you come out and you're right below that classroom, right outside that the stairwell, come around, it's called the space lab. And, uh, and both of them have sign all the time. What, what um, problems you said on page 695? I'm sorry? What problems you said doing on page 695? Uh, any of the odds. I'd say do number one, mm -hmm. any of the odds, 3 through 19. Okay. And when you turn this page, any of the odds, 21 to 31. Do 33. Mm -hmm. 35 to 49. Okay. 51 to 61. Okay. You don't have to do them all. Do some in each group. Okay, Until thank you. You feel really good about, oh, I know this, so move on to the next one. Okay. Okay, good deal. Good questions, by the way. I hope I did. Yeah. I do you practice. <laughs> but both ways work. Yeah, good your point. way was easier. Yeah. What's that? Your way was easier, but I just yeah. didn't give you. Yeah, but yeah, you can do it either way you want. Okay.